Welcome to the first episode of Buddy Sharp, Sharp Talk. Sharp Talk is where we I bring real people who have done magnificent transformations working with their mind, body, and soul. And we go straight into the nitty gritty on how they transform their life. And I've got first guest here, who's Laura, who's a client of mine. And she's going to be talking through some of the steps that she's done to transform her body and the journey that she's been on. So Laura, welcome yourself to hey, the hey. stage. Thank you for having me. And thank you for being on the first podcast. I'm so excited. First episode. Yes. Yes. Let's get it. Let's go. So Laura, if I could explain a little bit more about yourself. Mm -hmm. I know that you're a businesswoman, entrepreneur, very motivated, oh, thank very you. focused, <laughs> love cats. Yep. And also and love McDonald's. Oh yeah, I'm loving it. Uh, okay, but. <laughs> <laughs> so if you could just tell tell people about, you know, about yourself. Yeah, sure. So my name's Laura. Um, I run um, two different businesses at the moment. So my first business, I do marketing and I work with different brands um, across the globe, really, actually. So I help them with their online sales and be able to create an online brand presence. And then I have a second business in which I have a talent management agency called Cold, in which we work with different influencers um, around the UK, really, and helping them produce podcasts and YouTube shows. Um, so that's a very small nutshell of what I do to not ramble on too long. Okay, so you can see... <laughs> From what she does, she's a very, very busy woman and she's, do you know what I mean? Time is of the essence. So mm -hmm. we want to keep this short and get straight to the point <laughs> on this. All right. So in saying that, what was the problem that you were having before you discovered Body Sharp and discovered a coaching? Well, I mean, it's best for me to tell my story for you to then see where the problems came around. Okay. So I was in a period of my life where I've always worked for myself. So I've uh, had my first business since I was like 15. I used to sell postcards um, <laughs> at little arts fairs. And then as I went on, I started to have my own agency. We had our offices in jury court. We did all of that after uni and stuff. Um, but it was at a point where realistically, naturally when you're working with video as well, there's often, and you're working with clients, there's often more times where you're having to, you know, be more client facing and you're having to basically get out there a little bit more. And this is a time when social media was kind of like up and coming. And it's one of those periods where I realized I actually have to be in front of the camera or at least in front of people a lot more often than I thought. And I just literally lacked so much confidence. You can see it when I am there and I am like, hiding behind my business partner, like standing a few steps back behind him so that I would feel smaller. Um, and it's just like, I can literally look, look back at those photographs and see how I felt in those moments. Um, and then when lockdown came, COVID came, at this point we had got rid of the offices as well. And I was no longer working out all the time and I was no longer on shoots and filming. Um, and I was just at home basically, wasn't I? And I don't know why, I don't know what motivation I had, but pre I think purely because I had nothing better to do really at this time. Like I was, obviously I used to go on shoots all the time and like the first job that got canceled was the NHS, obviously. And um, I was just always obviously out and about before, but now I was just at home and I was only editing at my computer and I wasn't out at I, was, I wasn't out at all anymore. So um, I think I took this time realistically to kind of like take advantage of the fact that there was not much to physically do. And I used this time to really start my weight loss journey. So this was about maybe like three, four years ago or something. I can't remember how long lockdown was now. Um, but that's what time when basically over the period of like a year, I lost about 25 kg or three stone, three and a half stone. I can't remember the calculation. But um, that was basically about a third of my body weight because I was around 80 kg and it went down to 60, sorry, a quarter of my body weight wasn't so, I okay. or 85 kg I was so, so yeah 85 kg yeah it was and quite heavy okay and you went down to about 60 okay so or 58 or something like that so I lost a lot of weight and um so, along with so you did the weight loss journey yeah. and, and lost all the weight yeah okay but but you but, that sounds good so so you know uh, props off to me congratulations well done. I'm about. I know. that was amazing that was amazing but the problem was is that it was lockdown there were no gyms so I purely did this off a calorie deficit so I just basically ate a thousand calories a day did all my research and figured out how much I need to be consuming in order to lose that body in order to lose that weight and that's what I did and that was great except for the fact that I looked like crap afterwards. Like I basically had now become someone who was severely overweight and now looking actually severely ill a little, little bit, a little bit. Um, I was now too skinny. I literally, what you would define as like skinny fat almost. And I remember I went to the gym when the gyms finally did open because I lost all that weight just purely through like, like just making sure that I was eating the right foods. Um, and when I say the right foods, I just mean enough calories to like literally survive on because I didn't need to burn any, I didn't actually need many calories in my body because I was just at 
home all the time during this lockdown. But um, by the time I went to the gym, when the gyms had opened up again, um, I remember picking up some weights and I almost passed out. I actually like, I went, I think my whole eyes went black and then everything went, no, they went white. All I could see was like a bright light and my ears just went, they shut off. And I remember being really disorientated at the gym and I had to sit down and someone was passing me water and stuff. And mm. it was a bit like, like, I'm not okay. Like I have to come to the gym and put on food and I have to eat more. Otherwise I'm going to pass out in the gym when I'm trying to do anything. Okay. So initially why you got started was for mm -hmm. confidence reasons. Yeah. You didn't feel confident in front mm -hmm. of the camera or taking pictures. Yeah. Okay. And then you lost the weight. Mm -hmm. Okay. Did your confidence improve? Well, yeah, because when I lost the weight and I had clothes on, I looked fabulous. Like okay. I suddenly, I had to buy all new clothes. I went from a size 16 or a size extra large to large to a size small to a size eight. Mm. So I had to buy a whole new wardrobe, which is fantastic. I'd have clothes. I, would, I could literally fit two of me on the inside. Okay. So when I had clothes on, I looked great. But when I took so my clothes- So that was a lovely experience, yeah? Yeah. Okay. But when I took my clothes off, what's your motto? Okay. Yeah. You know, you have you to feel good. feel good. Naked, naked. Yeah, exactly. Is, okay. And I did not, which is why I wanted to go gym because I realized I needed to build a better physique. But I wasn't eating the right things. And the problem actually come when I, when I did come to, by the time I had met you, the problem that I had was because I had now got, got, gone to the gym, knowing that I have to build up my physique because I had that knowledge in my head, I now started to obviously eat more food, which then naturally meant I was putting a little bit more calories on. But the problem was I was now terrified and I mean petrified of going back to how I looked before. So what I did was then basically caused myself to have an eating disorder and I would eat. And then if I, if I felt like I went over my macros, I'll be throwing up or I'll be starving myself the next day. And it really messed with my head. Like it was something that I struggled with for years. And the problem was, is that like, I had all this knowledge in my head, but almost now I just couldn't apply it in a way that actually was going to be healthy because I was just almost like just destroying my own body purely because of my mind was terrified to be able to put on weight. So I was always never going to hit the goals in the gym because I wasn't putting the right things in my body. And then I was always terrified to eat and having to fight that mental battle as well. But then also not happy with the way I looked because I just looked skinny fat. So by the time I met you, I had knew how to lose weight, but I didn't know how to like build my dream body after that. I didn't want to look super skinny. I wanted to be one of the people who was able to have a bit of strength in myself so I could finally do a pull up or that I could finally, you know, like fill out my body shape. But, but before I met you, my problem was is that I was terrified to eat and I didn't really necessarily have a regime in the gym. It was just basically trying to go, hoping that I'd get my dream body, but I didn't really know what I was doing in the gym per se. And um, yeah, I actually need, I just needed a lot more structure and guidance in order to kind of like fight my fear of food really. Okay, so you went from confidence mm -hmm. to now structure and guidance. Mm -hmm and feeling a bit overwhelmed when you get to the gym because yeah. you didn't know what you were doing. Mm -hmm. So you felt a little bit lost in the yeah. process. Okay, okay. But it's amazing how what we start off with at the beginning then automatically changes as we go along the journey. Yeah, absolutely. And, and okay, that's good, that's good. All right, so, okay, what, what was your frustrations? What, what was your frustrations and feelings that you were having? I guess You'd... my frustrations, oh, sorry, say that again. Yeah, what was your frustrations and problems that you were feeling? Yeah, I guess my frustrations that were having was 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 pretty much just feeling like, okay, I'm going to the gym, I'm doing I'm doing workouts. I could, you know, as, as I was saying to you just before we started this, like when I was bigger, I was actually able to, before lockdown and when I was heavier, I could go into the gym and I could actually do some quite heavy weights. And that was really good because I felt like I was going in and people were like, oh, you don't go gym much, but you can do that. Um, but the problem was, is that when I lost all this weight, I was then expecting to be able to do that same kind of like gold again. And I couldn't do it. I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't squat 60 kg. And I'm just there like, oh damn, like I've got to, I've got to restart. But because I was always pushing myself to try and get back to that goal that I was already at before, um, that's when I started to black out in the gym and stuff. Cause I wasn't feeding myself enough in order to do that. And if you remember our first session that we had, do you remember I almost, I, I was super yeah. dizzy on it. Yeah, you, was, you, <laughs> you had to give me some BCAs like, Lord, like what did you eat before I came? And I was like, uh, uh, Frosties. <laughs> 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 and you're like, no, this isn't gonna work. And that's when we're like, we had to, we had to like, we, it was more than just me actually turning up to the gym, but I had to make sure I was preparing myself beforehand. And that's where working with you was kind of like putting that discipline in place. I have all this knowledge in my head, but just like applying it at the same time as breaking that fear of, but I don't want to gain any weight because that's my, that was my bad mental head. That was my limiting belief, which is like, if I, if I eat, I'm going to get fat again. And I don't mean bigger and stronger. I mean fat. And that's a difference in my head between that. And I never wanted to 
become that again. So that was the frustration I had was that I couldn't actually do what I was used to doing in the gym because I no longer had the strength. And I was terrified to put the, the food in my body, which is what it needed to fuel it. So it was just this battle of that I was never gonna win really by myself. And I had tried for years, you know, I had been going to the gym consistently even before I met you, but because of my fear of food, I wasn't really actually gonna actually achieve what I visioned in my mind. It was never gonna fruition. That's interesting. Thank you, thank you. So moving forward then, so what was difference in the services that we offer at Body Shop? Well, you're mean. I'm mean? Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> mean, mean. <laughs> You're mean, you're loud, you're scary. And um, yeah, I, I, I can't, I can't just do what I want. <laughs> okay, so you needed more, more structure and guidance, but you needed somebody to like really- I needed really... a bit of discipline. I needed, okay. I needed to be told like, you know, what to do. This is what the plan is. Um, like I already knew, like I already came to you with like knowledge in my head, like, yeah, I, I'm, I'm this way and I need to be having, you know, about hundred grams of protein in me. And, you know, you see me, I was sending you pictures of me labeling foods of like, I'm very good at the systemization. But then when I actually get into the gym, Gym, I, I, it's just like oh I, 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 I really hate the gym Mike like I don't enjoy it I prefer to be outdoors and doing walking or hiking or something physical outside but I know that that's not going to achieve my dream body that's going to you know that's going to give me like a great heart and great you know better cardio and what do you call it cardiovascular cardiovascular yeah yeah that kind of but that all of that kind of fun stuff and but it's not going to craft the body that I wanted. No, it's, so. not gonna, it's not going to give you the curves no. it's not going to give you the tone mm -hmm. it's not going to give you the mental strength nope and I always felt like, okay, I had in my knowledge, like I've always seen YouTubers, they'll be saying like, oh, you know, gain, in order to gain the weight that you want to gain, you know, you've got to eat more. And then there was, I, I was seeing what girls were doing online and stuff, but my head just couldn't, couldn't kind of like figure out like, okay, but if I need to get that body, I need to eat that much. That terrified me. And I never felt like I was going to the gym and doing the right things enough to justify eating that. But when I came with you, I was being pushed to a level that I hadn't really been pushed before and doing the exercises right. So I realized that, but when I was with you, I did kind of start to feed myself in that way, but I, it was fuel then. It meant that I was coming and doing better sets. Mm. Whereas by myself, I just wasn't doing that at all. Mm. So then when I realized that like, okay, I can actually see myself in the body and we're taking the photographs and I'm watching a transformation. I'm like, I'm actually physically gaining weight on the, like I was gaining okay, weight on the scales. That, but... that goes into my next question. Okay, I was okay. Say, take us to the point when, mm -hmm the moment when you realized that it was actually working and it, we were help, I was helping you to solve your problem? Yeah, it's the naked part. Cause I always had to look good in clothes. Like I was always able to just kind of have this illusion. So, you know, and if you take certain angles and you, and you wear certain clothes or clothes that are flattering to your body at least, then, you know, you can just look fantastic. But the problem was is that I used to, before when I used to take off my clothes and I said, I'm knickers, my legs are super skinny. My head now feels huge. And I'm just like, I'm looking like a lollipop. And I, I cannot, I cannot have this. So, um, and it was one of those ones where like, when I lost weight, I think my breasts, they went from like a size, like double D E to like a B, C. So there was a big difference there. And you can't gain that back unless, you know, you have like enhancements and stuff. And obviously, but what you can gain back is your thickness in your legs and your bum. Cause I used to have like more down there, but then when I lost weight, it just went. So, you know, I, I, I made peace with the fact that I wasn't gonna be able to fill out a, a top at the, at the top, but I really, really wanted to kind of like work on the bottom half. And when I was with you, it was it was finally when I got home and I would see over the period of time, like, oh, actually, my shape is actually starting to fill out now. And like the tr my trousers that I bought that were size eight, they're not quite fitting, but in a good way. Like I can't mm -hmm. like get them over my bum anymore, which is really nice. So, you know, um, it kind of like meant that I could physically see the differences. Um, my weights always kind of stay the same, actually. I've always near enough. I've got up a pound or two on there. Oh, you know, like that. But my bo when we're tracking it, my body fat is going down finally and my muscle mass is going up, which is exactly what I want. And it's all because I'm doing the right exercises in the gym that you've told me and I'm eating the right foods and I'm pairing them together. So I'm not eating more, but not training and then just getting fat. And I'm not like, you know, just going into the gym and like trying to hit hard, but then passing out, which is literally what happened without you. Um, so yeah, it was finally being able to see the results in the mirror and then also see the metrics. Cause I, I'm a numbers person. I mm. like to see data. So when I can physically see that my muscle mass is increasing and my body fat's decreasing, I'm like, I'm hitting the goal. So I don't really watch the scales as much anymore. I don't really, I can see physically cause it's also on there. But what I track at least every week is my muscle mass and my body fat. How about when you, I know part there was times when you trained with me mm -hmm. and then we moved to the next phase and you were training by yourself. How did you feel going back in the gym 
and working out by yourself as well. I felt like a beast. Like even today, I just come from the gym right now and then there was this girl and she looked amazing. She's got like this back for days and arms and stuff. And then like, she was literally just like, but I was, I think I just had on leg press. I had like four plates. I think I was doing, I can't remember. I don't know what the starting resistance is, but like, I, it, can you work it out? It doesn't matter. Anyway, um, I was doing floor, four plates. And then when I finished, I took, I was taking them off and she's just like, oh, he goes, you got some strong legs on you. And I'm like, yeah, I'm, like, I'm working my way back up there. And like, this woman looks fab. And I'm thinking like, I'm talking like, she's like built like proper. Like she's, she must be like doing this. And she goes, I'm just trying to maintain now. And she literally only has one plate on, but obviously she's got her routine of what she's doing. So it's not the fact that I'm stronger than her. It's that, She's knowing what she's oh, doing, yeah, but yeah. I'm getting complimented in the gym by women who look flipping like amazing. Like you can just tell, like she knows what she's doing. Because that goes on to my fifth question about tell us, tell, tell me about what it looks like in your life now that you've solved the problem. Well, I mean, it's literally that, like one, it's the confidence is even higher now because not only do I feel like I look better in clothes, but I feel like I look better when like, yeah, let's say I've got a crop top on or like I was just at the Cotswold for my best friend's birthday and I was in a bikini and my friend was like, your body's actually really good. I'm like, thank you. I've been working quite hard on it. Like, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like, it's definitely not where I want it to be, but like, I'm so much happier now with where it is. Like, and even if I go like, cause as a woman, like when you have your periods and times in a month, like your body can change literally week by week. So I know that even when I'm coming up to my one key factors for me, like every time I was about a week before my period, I would really hate my body cause I get bloated and bigger and I feel sluggish. But even now a week before my period, I still feel really confident. And obviously as soon as my period hits, like I just get a flat stomach and it's like, oh, look at that, that's amazing. And I know my body changes, but it's being comfortable with my body actually for every single day of the week and every single day of the month rather than just liking myself for one week and then hating myself for the rest of it it's like an actual consistency so even if I gain a few pounds here or I lose a bit of that like I'm on a you know like you know the the, the chart like it goes up and down all the time but it's a continuous progression up so I'm just really pleased with um with that really and obviously you're on my case every week if I don't go gym anyway so there's not much choice because you're mean and scary and you shout at me and you tell me all about the form. And now in my head, even when you're not there, I'm just there like soft knees. Okay, then right, bang the, bang the back, right, straight arms, this, this, everything like that. It's like, breathe, Laura, breathe. And what I'm thinking of is really. everything you're shouting at me. But um, it works, do you know what I mean? Because I'm actually now doing the exercises properly. So I've, I'm, I've, actually start, I've actually now hit pretty much everything that I was doing at my older weight before, but in my new size now. And we worked on that really, like you started me on weights. So I'm like, this is a baby weight. Like, what are you making me do this weight for? But it's because you were working on my form, but now I'm going in and I'm hitting the weights that I want and I'm feeling it in the areas that I should feel it in because I'm hitting the right form. So there's a lot that I wouldn't have been. So that's why I like the mix of like being able to go by myself and feel independent. Because if I'm in another city, if I'm traveling around like Manchester or London, I can still go gym um, and I can still keep on track with the program that we've got in our app. But at the same time, I can come with you and then you can scream at me and push me harder. I mean, I can go away and think, damn, I can actually do more than what I thought. Mm. So it's that support that I don't get by myself, yeah, um, yeah. which I really enjoy with working yeah. with you. What about your relationship with food? Because I know you went through a lot with your food before. Well, yeah, I no longer fear food. No, that's a lie. I st you know, what? it's one of those ones where it's like people say like, you know, if like people have addiction, they say like you're always an addict. It's like, I guess it's one of those ones in your head where it's like, that's always going to be something that's in the back of my mind. But how how much it actually impacts my life is, is severely less now. So I'm just really kind of like comfortable kind of eating the right foods and, and trying to just kind of like have more of like a, a moderated diet. So it's more of like a, it's less of like ca counting every macro, which can start to get me into overload if I do, but like just making better choices. So we started talking about the the phrase that you have, eat like a dog, which is just eat the same foods over and over again. Like a dog constantly has the same dog food over and over again. And what that naturally does is just means that I can go into my fridge, pick up like my packet of rice and pick up like a half chicken. And I roughly know how many calories that's going to be, how many macros I'm going. So I'm like, okay, what if I have that? And then I have one of my three to five breakfasts that I kind of have in the morning. I don't have to measure all those macros up because I kind of roughly know that if I have that and I have that and I have that for dinner I'm gonna be hitting like you know what I want and I definitely still go McDonald's you won't like that but I do because I'm human yeah. but what I do is have it in moderation so hey, I like that I like that we, we can we can win with that we can have work with moderation. that you know what I mean so it's way less often which is much better and if I I'm knowing I'm going to have a McDonald's. I'm, you know, that maybe the next day instead of having one of my bigger breakfasts, I'll have a, one of the lighter breakfasts just to make me feel like, you know, I'm in like a nice flow. So it's not like an every single day 
I'm counting my macros because I'm not because it will put me back into a really bad headspace of like watching everything mm. too closely to the point where I know it's going to like, you know, affect me and stuff. But I do enjoy just having, it's literally like, I feel like a poster, but I have a healthy balanced diet now because some Brilliant. days are good and some days are less good. But overall, it is much better and, and it makes me more awake. It makes me more productive. Um, I can focus more. I used to live on energy drinks before to give me energy, but now I kind of have like a natural energy. Um, so I don't I don't take those anymore, which is great. Yeah. Um, and you, make, you help with my sleep as well. Okay. Um, yeah. So there's been loads of things that have changed, but uh, yeah. So sleep, <laughs> you've increased more in your sleep as yeah, well. Yeah, like I can track to... my sleep now and everything. Brilliant, brilliant. So, you know what? I'm going to ask you a question now because, mm -hmm. like, you know, going back to my desire format, you yeah. know, discover, mm -hmm. you know, set a standard, action plan, evaluate, again, refine. Question is, what was your biggest discovery? Something that, you know, you had to, because I always say, if you're going to go to the next level, you got to discover where you're at. And it was like, right, that was a crossroad. I guess, well, the biggest thing I discovered in the gym was the fact that, like, I actually am stronger than I thought I was going to be. Like, mentally, like, I just kind of, like, I put in my head, like, this limiting belief that, like, I'm a certain weight, so I can only now lift a certain something. And you're like, no, we're going to get you back to that. And I'm like, like that's just not going to happen. Like, I passed out in the gym when I tried to do it before. Um, but, you know, you really do, before we start a set, kind of get me into state. And like, you know, I mean, we met at Tony Robbins. So we met at like ultimate peak state versions of ourselves. And like, I absolutely love that. And that's part of like our story, like as, as, as like a, as a pair, which I absolutely love. And we carry that energy into the workouts. So as well as like physically in the gym, but you also work with me a lot almost like as almost like a bit of a life coach at the same time like about because if I'm coming in and I've had a bad day and you're like Laura like I can see your state is off like I can just see it's like off and you're just like Laura we need to get you back into peak state like come on like just start like, screaming yes 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 and we have to like do those things and those exercises to get me because otherwise we won't have a good workout but what, my, what that's helped me realize is that even when I'm outside of the gym and like, again, if I'm not in the right state, it's like, right, you've got to snap it out, snap into it. So it's almost become a reverse thing. Like this morning, the reason why I went to the gym is because I couldn't get into state when I was working. I was just a bit like, oh, like, I'm just like, I've got so many things on. I'm a little bit fussy. I was in bed. I was groggy. And I was like, you know what? Hit the gym and that will get you into state. That's and right. it's kind of flipped it now. Yeah. Whereas before I needed to get into state to go to the gym, but now I use the gym to get into state. Bam. And that's kind of powerful. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love that. Because <laughs> like Tony's always said, and I always believe, you got to change your physiology. You got to change mm. on how your body is mm. before you can actually get in your mind. Yeah. And it, as you see, it works. Yeah, it's yeah. doing all right. Yeah. All right. As long as you don't cross you. You know, cross me, cross me. <laughs> Listen, one of my clients mentioned something to me and, you know, as you as a female, uh, I want to throw it out there and any of the women that are listening to this. She Shout said, out to the women. Okay, yeah. She said... That some she felt intimidated in using resistance equipment, weights, barbells, and dumbbells, due to the fact she could be thrown that she's not feminine. Oh no, it makes me feel Did, powerful. Okay. Yeah, no, I like but, it. I like the power trip yeah. that it gives me. But I used to feel really intimidated because I just thought I'm wasting someone else's space who could actually be using this exercise equipment, which is kind of like the, no, girls can lift, do you know what I mean? But like, I feel like in order to be able to get to that point, it, it's all nicer to say to someone, hey, just go and use it and just find the confidence there. But like, I didn't do it that way. I had to almost be shown what I should be doing. And then so it meant that when I was walking to the, that area, I felt like I knew what I was going to do. So that gave me more confidence to be like, right, get into state. Of course, if you've got the balls just to be able to walk up and do that, if that's like how you overcome things. Mm -hmm. But for me... I needed to be like right, or I want to prepare myself to be able to actually go in at a better, a better in a, like a better state. So that's why I kind mm. of like really enjoyed working with you because by the time I went back to the gym, I was just there like yeah, I can just walk in now and I, I do feel keto. Mm, right. But like before, I just couldn't have done it. But that's because you you made sure that I was doing things right, which then made me because I didn't want to like look like a meme. Like you know when you see videos, it's like oh, what's that person doing? Like you can have that fear, especially. Especially, um, I'll be honest. You, I had that fear when I went to Brazil. Did you really? Yeah. Oh yeah, you, you saw some hench women. Yeah, when, when I when I turned up and I was like, wait, there. <laughs> these women got legs, man, and they're lifting a lot more. Me, it made me feel. I felt the opposite way around. So I, I know what it feels like. Yeah. But uh, so it goes back to I had to get into state. Yeah. So I got into state. Yeah, yeah. That was it. 
Yeah, no, literally, I feel like if if feel like if you are fear, if you do have that fear, like having a PT, even just for a short while, just to break through that fear can give you the confidence or even a friend who knows what they're doing in the gym. But like, I had to be almost trained to be able to feel confident in there. And that's okay that like, I didn't just, you know, have that within me. But again, overcoming that means that now I can go to any new gym and I feel fine. And now I'm going to gyms around the country. And before, if I went to another gym in another country, I still wouldn't hit the... I wouldn't hit the free weights and stuff like that. I wouldn't go to that area because I feel like, oh, I'm just going to stick to the machines and where the other girls are. But now I go into another gym in a new city that I've never been to before and I walk straight to the weights and I have the confidence to do it. But I couldn't have done that before. And that confidence has gone through to your personal life as well. No. No, it hasn't. No, I'm joking. It has. Um, <laughs> But it's one of those ones. <laughs> hey, but she seems pretty confident on here. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's you know what? It's it's part of the mix, isn't it? I think the things that you want to make sure that you that you are like set for in life is your health, wealth, and your relationships, isn't it? And it's just one of those pillars. Like they say that the triangle is like the strongest structure out there. You know, the one that doesn't tip and break and stuff. And if you don't have your fitness like in check or at least on a path, like it doesn't have to be perfect. Mine certainly isn't because my life isn't fitness first. My life is probably business first. That's where my head goes. Fitness is then like something that, you know, and I'll put relationships there. So fitness is like the last thing I'm actually working on. But if I deter it too much, it just me, it really does affect like my, my, my wealth because I can't work as hard because I actually can't focus. And then it affects my relationships because I don't feel as confident. So it's one of the pillars that I have to, I've had to learn to actually prioritize as much as I prioritize my relationships and my wealth at the same time. Otherwise, it, you know, the, it's just broken triangle really, isn't it? So it's, it's become something that I've had to learn to love more. And do I love the gym? No. Mike, I would much rather just wake up with abs and get a Mackie's, but that's not life. Um, and like everything else in life, you have to work for it. So <laughs> it's just become something that it's kind of like, it's almost like I had to take my, like the, the, the passion and the drive I've had for like relationships and, and, and for work and for wealth and put it into my health as well. And so it's just been pulling off on my natural tendencies and putting it in there that I really didn't want to. But, you know, it, as I said, you need all three pillars. Otherwise, you just break. Yeah, awesome, <laughs> awesome. Before we leave off, is there anything you could say to any of the women that have got hindering thoughts about resistance training or being strong that it may be thrown on them that they're losing their feminine? Well, I mean, one thing that I personally had was when people see me lose weight, they were like, oh, like, you know, you've lost too much weight and stuff. And, you know, that kind of like, it has almost like the negative effect of, of almost like, oh, well, you know, you'll never be perfect in terms of some people. And like, even now I feel the best I've ever felt, but there are some people who be like, oh, but don't you think you've lost a bit too much weight? Or like, or like, or I tell them my weight loss journey story and their reaction immediately. And this can be men or women. It's like, um, like, oh yeah, well, I'm happy with my weight though. And I'm like, I really didn't like say that, like, you know, that you can't be that weight. Like, because, there's some people who are much much heavier than me and look far better than me because we know that again weight can be distributed in completely different ways when I was 80 kg it was all on my stomach and my face I can you can flash up a before and after picture I'll send you them and you can physically see that my body looks better like this whereas I have friends who are like literally that 80 kg but like it's just it, they're toned and it's in the right places and I'm trying to actually get heavier now but in the right way so I do really stress not to watch the weight scales, even though I say I had a weight loss journey, which I did, but a lot of it that I lost was, was obviously fat. But like, it's almost like one, um, you know, don't watch the scales too much and do measure the body fat percentage and uh, the muscle fat, because that is how, that is how you, that's actually how you look. Um, like obviously if you're like morbidly obese, that's completely different about lo the importance of losing just general weight. But I think if you're at my position where I was before, I should have been less focused on the scales and more focused on those percentages because by the time I had lost all that weight, I looked terrible and it didn't actually look better. So there was a time when I did look terrible, but now I'm very confident. Um, in the, I'm very happy, should I say, with the progression that I'm making. Mm -hmm. So the one thing is never to worry too much about the actual numbers on the scales, but look more to watch the metrics. And the second thing is, is that everyone's got their own preference to what they feel comfortable with. If I feel comfortable at this size, that's great for me. Like there's some people who think this is too skinny. There's some people who think this may be too fat, but I am literally fine. So, you know, don't compare because I've actually got friends who are actually on the opposite problem where they're trying to gain weight and they find it really hard. They might have like autoimmune diseases or they just generally have been on like a journey to do that. So when they'll be like, oh, you look really slim. It's like, 
that actually affects them because that means that they're not actually achieving what they want yeah. to achieve. So it's like, it's really hard to be able to figure out like, you know, how to even compliment someone these days, to be fair. But like, yeah, it can be taken in different ways, which is a bit but of a weird But you know one. your own But I know identity. my own one, so it's that's, fine. That's a great thing. Yeah, you know yeah, your yeah. own identity, mindset, mindset. body-wise. Mm -hmm. And I suppose finance and business. Yeah? yeah, yeah, yeah. Always. That one, that one's that there one's fine. It is, there <laughs> it is, there it is. There and is. also get yourself a motivational person like Mike Spice, because like I'll have to shout out you for this. It's like you've been an actual second father to me, or more more of an actual father to me, shall we say. Yes. But like it's you know, working with you, it's been more than just my fitness that I've been able to level up in. Like, you know, we sit and we work together and we've been able to level up and we've done a lot of other personal growth things together, and that's been absolutely tremendous to me in the last year. Like, you know, you're one of the people that I speak about often about yeah we're doing this and we're doing that and you know the motivation that we have in the gym we just take out and we do with anything that we kind of like go after in life and that's why you know I think you're an incredible human being and I think that everyone who you get to work with is truly blessed because not only you know are you fantastic and knowledgeable in your skill set but you're just an immensely motivating and like just positive outlook person who just makes anything feel believable and anything is possible like any limiting beliefs that you one might come with when they work to you is ultimately smashed within seconds. And <laughs> if you dare to try and question that, Green Man comes out and um, you can define what Green Man is, but um, Green Man <laughs> comes out and you're not allowed to feel that way. So. That's, ego. That's like, we're going to do it. We're going to find a way. You scream yeah. in the gym. Like, I'm scared. Like, I'm like, oh my gosh. Like, sometimes I sat in the car, like, right, you're going in. You've got to make sure you get into state. Otherwise, Mike is going to kill you. But, um, but yeah, so I really do have to shout out for you. You're more than just a PT. So that's, that's, It's been a pleasure working with you. Thank you. But for anybody that's listening to this, there it is. You can transform your life at any stage. You just need to have the tools, have accountability, and just be positive about the outcome that yeah. you're going for. So, listen, I'm going to end the show on that note. Mm -hmm. Mind, as we say, mm -hmm. body, mm -hmm. and we're body sharp. Let's go. Let's go.